In this movie, I'm going to continue with the implementation of the Ammo Manager class. Previously, we created the class so that during the start function, it generates a pool of ammo objects inside the ammo array, and that's exactly what we need. But of course, generating the pool at the beginning of the level doesn't actually hide or show the ammo objects when we need them. When an object such as the spaceship object fires ammo, we need to show the ammo in the scene and then hide it after a specified time to make it look as though the ammo is being generated and then destroyed. And really, we haven't got any functionality right now to do that. To implement that functionality, I'm going to be using a special kind of object called a queue. This is part of the .NET or the Mono framework. And the way the queue works is that it's a special kind of list. It allows us to take an ammo object and to put it into the queue. Then when an object such as the spaceship fires the weapons, and we generate ammo, what we're going to do is we're going to take the first ammo object in the queue and make it visible. Then when the ammo object disappears again, we simply add it back to the end of the queue and in this way we get a complete cycling of objects, completely reusable objects that we can just take out of the queue and put back in as and when we need them. Now to use the queue class, I'm going to need to use a new namespace here. So I'm going to move to the top of the source file and choose using system dot collections and dot generic. This will give us access to the queue class here. I'm going to scroll down further inside the source file and add a new object for the queue class. So I'm going to choose public and I'm going to select queue. And here I have to enter the type of object that it's going to be. And I'm going to specify a type of transform. So these are going to be the transforms for each of the ammo objects. I'm going to choose ammo queue give that the name of ammo queue here, and it's going to equal a new queue transform object like so, and that creates a completely new queue class. Now, of course, further down inside the start function, when we're generating the ammo array, and we're populating the ammo array object, I want to add all of the newly generated objects to the ammo queue one by one, so each object is going to be added to the end of the queue one after another. So to achieve that, I'm going to move down here to the start function, and insert some additional lines here. So I'm going to choose ammo queue. So I'm going to grab ammo queue here. And to add an item to the queue, you call the function here nq and simply pass in as a parameter the object that you want to add to the queue. Well, in this case, it's going to be object transform because this represents the transform of the selected ammo array object here. So I'm going to pass object transform into the queue. And then finally, I'm going to hide the ammo object. So I'm going to take the current ammo object here and choose dot set active and then choose false. That will hide the ammo object after adding it to the queue. But of course, we're going to need a separate function that is going to take the object off the front of the queue, show it in the scene, and then when it hides again, it's going to be re-added to the end of the queue again. So to do that, I'm going to scroll down and completely delete the update function here and I'm going to add in a new function which I'm going to make as a static function here so I'm going to choose public static and transform so it's going to return a type of transform here and I'm going to call this object or this function spawn ammo and it's going to take two arguments they are going to be the vector 3 position which is going to be the position at which the ammo should be moved when it's spawned and then the quaternion rotation object here. So this function is going to allow us to take an ammo object, spawn it at a particular position and orientation. And what this function gives us back is the ammo object that has been spawned. Remember when I say spawned here, I'm not really suggesting that the ammo object is instantiated dynamically. We did that at the beginning of the level when we created the ammo pool here. All I mean is that the object is going to become active and visible and when we no longer need it, it's going to become hidden again and added to the end of the MOQ. We'll get started at implementing this function next.